This episode is a little different because all you gotta do to make money is find the location of a giant locomotive under a river and I'm gonna tell you which bridge it came off of and we'll do that later on in the episode. But for now, let me read the message that kicked us all off. And here's what it says. Do you help people find locations of events? My dad's papa told him that his grandpa visited the site of a train crash in Dallas and the engine and freight car went into the river. The river has to be strong enough to sweep a train downstream with the powerful currents. He and two friends watched men pull the freight car out of the river with cables pulled by men and horses, but they could not save the engine. He said they found a dead man down the river. Also, as they were pulling the freight car up, it almost fell over on its side, and from the opposite bank, they watched canvas bags, crates, and they are positive they saw a strong box fall out and sweep downstream. No one attempted to save any of it. Months later, they found one of the bags, but it had nothing in it except a bunch of waterlogged letters. They spent their days dreaming of the strong box and its riches. I would like to visit the site someday. There are no rivers like this that I can find in Dallas. I have checked them all. I'm starting to believe this is just a tale. Could you share with us anything that you find? Thank you. Please don't share my name. Well, you're in luck. I believe I have a perfect match for what you're describing. Plus, one person is willing to spend a million dollars to pull up the engine and restore it. So if you go out there and you pinpoint the exact location of this train, it will fetch you a handsome reward, I'm pretty sure. But let's jump into the history of this all and what happened. In the early 1870s, Manchester Locomotive Works of New Hampshire produced a top-of-the-line locomotive, Engine 642. And it was still in service up to 1885 and was operated by lineman Stacy Roach. Roach had to make a run from Fort Worth to the city of Texarkana. North Texas had been bombarded with torrential rain for days, but the train needed to keep on schedule due to railroad strikes and things were starting to get behind. On Sunday, March 15, 1885, engine 642 connected to the 304 run, which consisted of a mail car, followed by a baggage car, then a smoker car, a ladies car, and it ended with a sleeper car. Yes, ladies did have their own separate car for breastfeeding and other issues. The man who stoked the engine with fuel to keep it running was John G. Hayback, who married Roach's sister, Carrie. The rain continued to drown the land with barrels of water falling from the sky. But the brother-in-laws steamed up the engine and they departed on time just before 7 a.m. in the morning. No reports had came out of any dangers, so they were cleared to travel. However, they only chugged along at 12 miles per hour due to the inability to see through the heavy rain. They couldn't see down the tracks for danger, so they slowly navigated their way towards Texarkana. They were between Fort Worth and Dallas as they came to Village Creek and present-day West Arlington. A slapped-together wooden bridge was built over the creek, and it did its job. It was starting to weaken. Five days earlier, railroad workers had gone out and strengthened it, placing cribbing underneath it. However, they didn't finish the job, and they went on strike. The men who were supposed to report the danger of the bridge were also on strike, and no train should dare to cross this bridge. As Roach approached the creek, he tried to stop the train to no avail. The overstressed bridge could not support the 73,000-pound locomotive. As it crept on top of the bridge at a slow pace, the bridge creaked and cracked and groaned till it fell apart. The bridge was violently washed away, and the engine plunged into the waters that were now 16 feet deep, submerging the entire locomotive. The current was so strong that it started pulling that 73,000-pound beast down the creek. Then the mail car went in, and this is what I believe your great-great-grandfather called the freight car. It was followed by the baggage car that also went into the water, until it finally anchored and halted. The smoker's car filled with men was about to fall into the river as it dangled over the side of the bridge. The rest of the cars derailed, but remained upright and safe. The passengers leapt off the train and went into action to save the seven men in the front cars that plunged into the creek. Through their heroic efforts, they pulled everyone to safety except Roach and Haybeck, who were in the front engine. Somehow Roach appeared coming out of the baggage car like some sort of a magic trick, but he couldn't make it onto shore, so several brave men 
jumped into the raging waters of death to save him, and they did. However, Roach had a broken leg, deadly contusions, and a crushed lung. There was still no sign of Haybeck and absolutely no way to search for him without a deadly outcome. It was presumed that Haybeck was dead. Incredibly, not one passenger was injured, and everyone was accounted for except for Haybeck. The next day after the waters recited a bit, they worked in the rain to rebuild the bridge and pull the train out of the water. They managed to pull the mail car out and the baggage car by hand, which also fits your great-grandfather's description. I saw no record of cargo loss, but the side doors were 100% open in the flooding waters, and that's how Roach appeared. Unfortunately, later that day, a crew found Haybeck's body a half mile downstream from the wreck, which also fits the description. Believe it or not, engine 642 could not be pulled from the river, and it was just left there. So where is this giant 16-foot-long beast that is too much iron to rust away? Well, people have started to say the story is not true and that it never happened, but there is too much written and documented evidence that it did. So then they argued that it had been pulled up with the baggage and mail cars, that the account was wrong. Well, that too has been refuted as Walter Levi Smokey Dar wrote how he swam around it in 1912. The engine 642 was submerged at a 45 degree angle with the cow catcher and smokestack sticking up out of the water and the tail end being completely submerged under the water. And then in 1926, as they built a new bridge out of iron and concrete that is still being used to this day, the crew building it reported seeing the remains of 642 as well. The fact is, the engine is still there today. No known serious search has ever been reported. The site is popular with ghost hunters claiming to encounter Haybeck walking the banks. As far as treasure hunters and relic hunters, this sounds like a paradise to search. So if you want to search for the strong box, the crate's contents, engine 642, or hunt for Haybeck's ghost, your best bet is to park at Incredible Events DFW, but do the right thing and get permission first before parking in their lot. The wreck site is on the east side of the parking lot, and according to some, the last time it was seen was 200 yards north of the Division Street Bridge that spans over Village Creek. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. If you decide to search for it, the best of luck to you. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Until next time, we're off on another adventure. God bless.